Hi, John here. In this video, we are going to look at a counter flow cooling tower. We'll look at some of the main components and then I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works. So let's get started. You can see here that we have a counter flow cooling tower. I'll do a short spin so that you can have a look at it from all angles. You can see that we've got some yellow arrows. The yellow arrows indicate airflow. And we've also got some blue arrows and the blue arrows indicate water flow. So we can see here that we have two blue arrows entering into the side of the cooling tower. So what we'll do, we'll follow the water first and afterwards we'll follow the flow path of the air. So we can see the water is entering the side of the cooling tower and we are entering the distribution deck. So let's go in through the pipe. We'll go along here and we'll keep going along and you'll see now that the water starts to flow out to the sides. So it's coming out of the main manifold and going into the smaller distribution manifolds. Now if we go straight down we can see where the water comes out. The water is going to flow along the pipe through here and then it's going to come out of this hole and then it's going to impinge upon this plate here and the one below it and we're going to end up with a circular spray pattern. So that's what these two plates are doing. They're allowing us to spray the water over a large area and spray the water out evenly. So we're not getting just a huge jet of water coming out the center here and then landing on this item here, which is the fill. We can see that we have multiple nozzles because we have quite a large area to cover. We need to spray all of this black area here. So we need to cover as much of the fill as possible. This fill is actually called film fill. There's two types that you're likely to see. One is film fill and one is splash fill. Splash fill is used more for cross flow type towers. So we're not gonna talk about that too much in this video because this video is about a counter flow type cooling tower. So the water has been sprayed out of these nozzles. It's been spread across a large cross sectional area. It's now gonna drip into the fill and it's gonna pass through the fill and drop out the base of the fill. It's only flowing due to gravity as it passes through the fill. So let's go down through the fill, this honeycomb type structure. And as we go down, 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 you can see we've now come out the other side. The honeycomb type shape is much the same and the water is gonna drip down and it's gonna fall into our cooling tower basin. So it's going to fall into the area around here and we might have a water level that is approximately at this level here. Once the water has dripped down into the base of the cooling tower we can see that we have a discharge pipe. If I zoom in you can see that the water is being then sucked out of the cooling tower and it's going back to the process. As the water has passed through the cooling tower it has been cooled and I'm going to explain to you how that occurred in a moment but all the water has done essentially is enter through the top of the tower you can see there's the two pipes again where we originally came into the cooling tower and if we go through we can see there are our spray nozzles and then it dropped down into the base of the tower so that is all the water is doing entering into the distribution deck spraying onto the spray nozzles being spread across a large cross-sectional area, dropping down through the fill and into the base of the cooling tower. And then we are going to suck the cooled cooling water out of the base. And we can see that happening here. That would be a discharge from the cooling tower. And if the cooling tower is working correctly, then we're going to have a temperature difference between the discharge pipe here and the inlet pipes at the top of the cooling tower, which are around the opposite side. This temperature difference is actually known as delta T. So a relatively simple process for the water. Now let's have a look at the air. We've got the air entering all around the base of the tower. We can see the yellow arrow is going in. And we can see we've got a very large area 
that allows the air to enter into the base of the tower. It is the louvres that allow the air to enter into the base of the tower. And if we pass through the louvres, this is actually a bit more like a grill rather than a louvre, but what it is essentially doing is stopping animals and things like that entering into the base of the cooling tower. So the air passes through, and now the air is in the base of the cooling tower. The air is going to be drawn up through the fill. So let's pass through the fill as well. We can see we'll go through this hexagonal shape. Off we go. The fill is not a straight shape because we actually want to promote turbulent flow because then we get a better evaporation effect and cooling effect between the water and the air. So now we're back above the fill. There's our spray nozzles again. We'll do a little spin here. And now the air is going to be drawn up even higher through the tower. We're going to pass through this black item here. This black item is known as a drift eliminator. Let's pass through. We have to change direction slightly here. It's not a straight run. And then we're through the drift eliminator. And where are we now? We're actually at the same level as where the fan motor is installed. So we can see we've got an electric motor. This is a three phase AC electric motor. And then we're going to pass through the fan. And what I'll do, I'll go on the top because it might make it a little bit easier to see. We can see there, there's our fan. So we came up through the cooling tower, past the motor, past the fan blades. And we can see there, our arrows indicate that the air is flowing upwards and away from the cooling tower. So that's the path of the air. The path of the air is even more simple than the water in some respects. It's literally entering the base and being passed up through all of the components and being discharged then through the top of the tower. This is an induced draft tower. It's induced draft because the air is passing through the fill or over the fill before it reaches the fan. So just remember that if it's passing through or over the heat exchanger prior to reaching the fan, then it is an induced draft cooling tower. We can see on our arrows here that we've got blue arrows going down due to gravity, and we've got yellow arrows going up, and the air is being drawn up by the fan. Notice that the arrows are pointing in opposite directions. They're 180 degrees apart. So they're flowing counter current to each other, and that's why we call this type of tower a counter flow cooling tower. Now some people actually believe it is the air passing over the water which cools the water down. This is not strictly true. What we have is about 20% water flowing through the flutes, these items here in the film, and then we have about 80% air flowing up in the opposite direction. Now it's not really the air as such that's cooling down the water. There will be some cooling effects because the air is cooler than the cooling water. However, what's doing the cooling here is evaporative cooling. Some of the water, as it's passing through the film, is going to evaporate. So we've got this huge cross-sectional area. We've got the water spread very thin across the entire heat exchanger or the entire fill. And that means that as the air passes over this very thin film water, we're going to get some of that water evaporating. And as it evaporates, it's actually going to cool the water molecules that are surrounding it. Now, if you want to learn more about this, then you need to go and look up the latent and sensible heat lesson that we covered earlier in the course. But essentially, it's as I explained before, some of that water is going to evaporate and as it evaporates, it's going to cool the water molecules surrounding it. And that means that the water molecules that were cooled are going to drop out of the base because they didn't evaporate. And they're going to collect then in the base of the cooling tower in our reservoir area, which is around here. Now, what happens to the water that evaporated? Well, we don't want it to just drift away because if it drifts away, then we have a water loss. And this means that we're actually going to have a financial loss as well. So rather than have it drift away, what we're going to try and do is recapture some of that evaporated water. So we've got the water vapor coming up and then it's going to try and pass through this drift eliminator. 
you can see it's got this very weird V type shape. It looks like a V that's been spun 90 degrees. And what this V is actually doing is forcing the water vapor to pass through at a angle. So it's got to flow through here and rather than just flowing straight up and out, it's got to change direction, change direction again, and then change direction again to flow up and out. This is quite difficult for water molecules to do because water molecules are quite heavy. So what will happen is the air will pass through here no problem at all because air is not very heavy. It doesn't contain heavy molecules. However, water droplets suspended in the air will try to change direction and try to be swept along by the air current. But if they cannot do this, they're going to impinge upon the drift eliminator plates, maybe here, or here, or here, or maybe even here. And they will then condense and they will drip back down into the cooling tower. And in this way, we can reduce our losses. And this is called a drift eliminator because the losses due to evaporation are known as drift. If you can see a large plume of water coming out the top of the cooling tower, you've got to imagine that that water vapor has already passed through a drift eliminator. So if we didn't have a drift eliminator in the cooling tower, that water plume, that vapor plume coming from the cooling tower would be much, much larger. And that represents a water loss and a financial loss or an additional operating cost. So that's all things that we don't really want. Whatever remains of the water vapor will pass through here and it will go past the fan and up and out of the cooling tower. Remember that normally the fan is obviously spinning and that's what's creating this movement of air through the cooling tower. So that is essentially how a induced draft counter flow cooling tower works. If you want to learn more about cooling towers or engineering in general, then go to the video description area and check out the links there. And if you click on those links, you'll be taken to the website where you can access the full two and a half hour cooling tower course and some of the 3D models that you can see in this video. If you like this video, then please do share it or like it on social media. It really does help us out and allows us to produce more and more content. Thanks very much for your time.